thank you, Grace King, for uh, leading us in worship. Uh, I was not singing that song uh, in purpose, not because it wasn't a uh, bluegrass gospel, but uh, when I'm sitting in the front and I look up at the screen, uh, because of my uh, cancer and various uh, surgeries, the blood shuts off in my head. If I look up like this, after about two seconds, I start to get lightheaded and it would be terrible. Uh, also, uh, I want to thank my Sunday school class. Uh, they gave me a pass this morning. Uh, we just kind of didn't have Sunday school because my voice started to go, and I didn't want to not be able to make it through this sermon. Uh, almost uh, 14 years ago, I had cancer, and uh, the Lord and the radiation cured me, but radiation caused me to have carotid arteries uh, that were all clogged up and burned, and uh, I had to have surgery, and the surgery then, uh, I, my, this vocal cord is 30% paralyzed, so this one has to do all the work. So uh, I have, uh, I couldn't teach if I, you know, all day if I, if I had to, uh, but uh, my voice starts to go. I wanted to make sure that I could make it through this sermon and still be able to talk, because it'd be terrible to be at home and have my wife be able to talk and not be able to talk. So uh, I wanted to make sure that, uh, that I could make it uh, past the sermon. All right? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. We thank you, Lord, that uh, we have uh, many spiritual blessings because we are in you. And as we look at your uh, your word, I pray, Lord, that uh, you will be you, you will be honored and glorified. That people won't see the speaker, Lord, but will see uh, your Holy Spirit, we'll see Christ in us. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Also, want to thank uh, Derek for doing the PowerPoint. Uh, I went to a, uh, a workshop when I was a principal at Penn Cambria, and they said, uh, if you want to know anything about technology, this was a workshop on technology, if you want to know anything about technology, find, technology, find an eighth grader, and they will, they, will, uh, they will show you. Young people, now, they know technology. They've been born and raised in technology. I still remember when my son, he'll be 32, uh, August 10th, but when he was just a little guy in diapers, he would sit in front of the Commodore 64, he called it his pooter. <laughs> and and he, would, he would play games. And then when he got a little older, he would, uh, he would uh, play, uh, what's the game he put? Tetris, Pac-Man, whatever it was. But then, you know, when you win, you could put like a message on it, like your name and stuff like that. I'd go on and I'd start playing a game and it would come up, where's dad? You know, the top 27 games were hit. So young people, young people know technology, and I just appreciate uh, uh, getting this ready. We we had nothing for service, no songs. We had to do it the old-fashioned way. We had to use, actually use a hymn book. And uh, people were saying, "Well, this this isn't like church." That, that they those people love picking up the hymn book. Let's go to the first chapter of Ephesians, please. Ephesians. Chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Now in this, in this book, in this first chapter, in Christ is there 13 times. Now that ought to tell you something. If it's, if it's there 13 times, that it's important. How many of you have said, I've told you a thousand times, stop picking your nose. Right? We've, so we've said that. And that's just to your husbands. <laughs> so if we say it a lot of times, it means that's important. So this idea in Christ is what I want you to hang on to today. What I want you to understand what I, what I want you to, to uh, work on. We must live like and be like we are in Christ Jesus. Now in the 8th chapter of Romans, we learn that we are the children of God. We have the witness of the Holy Spirit that we are the children of God. And because we are His children, we are heirs of God and join heirs with Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Now, because we are God's children, we have to understand that He will make sure that our needs are supplied spiritually. That all we have to do is call on Him and our needs are supplied. And He does that because we are His children. 
My son uh, just finally got a job. He's 32. He's been training in surgery for forever. And he finally got a job, and he's in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. And he's living in a place called Warnersville. Warnersville, it's a poke and plum town. You poke your head in, you plum out of town. Both the city limit signs are on the same pole. And, uh, and, and he got this job. So we had, as he was moving, we had to switch vehicles. He got my van, and, uh, and uh, I got his Jeep. Well, I looked on the windshield. The Jeep needed the oil change. You should not run 35,000 miles on the same oil. So I had the oil changed. And then I looked and realized that before I gave the Jeep back to him, it had to be inspected. Now, he's pretty smart. I think maybe he knew all that when he decided we were going to change. But I got oil and I had it changed. And I did that not because I had to, but because I love him because I want to make sure that his needs are taken care of. It was $105 total that I didn't want to spend, but we didn't even give him a bill. We did that because we love him. I will do anything for my child because he's my child, and because he's my child, I love him. Now, we are the children of God, so why wouldn't our Heavenly Father do that for us? Why wouldn't our Heavenly Father make sure that we have all of our needs supplied? Because we know we are the children of God, our needs are supplied. And Oliver Green said this, we know, you're good, Derek. I'm not even going to look and check on you anymore. We know that he will never leave us or forsake us, but these finite minds and our limited faith cannot conceive the fullness of the blessing that rests upon us now as we sit together in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. Now, we are not sitting in heavenly places. We are sitting in an auditorium right now. But positionally, and in our relationship with Christ, we are in a heavenly place. And because of that, we have an understanding of who we are. Ephesians 1, 4 says, according, he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Holy and without blame. For me to be holy and without blame is to require a miracle. For you to be holy and without blame is to require a miracle. A miracle because we live in a world that's designed to distract us from God if you're a channel flipper like me when you're watching TV it doesn't take long until you are someplace you shouldn't be and we just have basic cable right? doesn't take long it's okay to be on the pirates this year that's okay because they're winning right you heard about the uh, young boy who was in divorce court, and uh, this is about four years ago, and they said, well, your parents are getting divorced, who would you want to live with? And he said, I can't live with my father, he beats me. He said, well, what about your mother? I can't live with her, she beats me. He said, well, who do you want to live with? He said, I want to live with the pirates, they don't beat anybody. <laughs> but you can't say that anymore, pirates are doing real well, pirates are doing well. It's okay to be on the pirates channel. But it doesn't take long. If you're flipping around, you'll find some place. And we're just kind of naturally drawn uh, something. I'm drawn, I'm drawn to something that's visual, something with lots of action. I'm drawn that way. What has saved our marriage, after it almost ruined our marriage, was the remote control. What I do is, when my wife is talking to me, when I'm watching TV, I hear, wah, 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 wah. so I mute it. And I look at her so that she knows that I care enough to watch her and to, and to hear what she's saying. If I don't mute it and I look at the screen, I don't really hear anything she says. But we're very soon, we're drawn places where we shouldn't be. All we have to do is just go anywhere and a lot of things want to distract us. You can go down to Walmart here. I, I got a good deal. I got 50 science fiction movies for $10. 
Do you realize that 75 hours of my life I would waste if I watched those? I also got 20... Vampire movies? Science fiction, what else about? War movies. 20 war movies uh, for another $10. I've got movies that will last me until I'm 70, if I watch them. But if I'd spent that many times, or that many hours in the Word, I would be more mature spiritually. You see, everything that's around anywhere draws us away from the Lord. We are to be holy, without blame, before Him in love. And it says, we have been, He has chosen us before the foundation of the world. Uh, in the Bible, you understand that God chose you. The only way you can understand spiritual things if it's, is if God chooses you. If you understand what the world has and understand what spiritual things have and make the right choice, it's because God chose you. Otherwise, we don't, we don't get it. The world cannot understand spiritual things because of what they experience. If you take somebody who's been in a home, and there are lots of kids who've been in a home without a loving father. When I taught school, six out of ten kids were either in broken homes or were living in with single parent homes, usually their mom. Those kids don't understand the idea of a loving father. Center City kids, uh, a lot of them have never had a loving father at home. They don't get the idea of what a loving father is. Other people have been born and raised in homes that may be secure in a sense, but are then taught you don't get anything for nothing. You've got to work for everything. <coughs> nothing is given to you. So you work and you work to try to get things. And as you try to look at a spiritual life, if you try to do it on yourself, you try to work to gain God's favor. I don't know about you, but with me, it's three steps forward and two steps back sometimes. You're growing in the Lord, and then the old man comes up. Even the Apostle Paul had trouble with that. He said, what I want to do, I don't do. And what I don't want to do, that I end up doing, right? And, and we're like that. Because we're human beings, we're like that. It's impossible, short of a miracle, to please God. It's impossible, short of a miracle, to live a life that pleases God. Now the miracle is, when these spiritual things don't make sense, when the Lord calls you and you respond, you can also choose not to respond, but when the Lord calls you and you respond, then these things that don't make sense, all of a sudden, make sense to you. Because you're thinking in spiritual eyes. And if you are truly in Christ, then these things aren't as bizarre. If you're truly in Christ, you get the idea that Jesus loved you so much that he went to the cross for you. You get the idea, even though you may not have known a loving father, that God loves you so much in John 3.16 that he allowed his son to go to the cross for us. This is how we know. Now, there's no place for a period in Ephesians 3, 1 to 14. Or Ephesians 1, 3 to 14 because it's one sentence. It's the largest, uh, the longest sentence in the Bible. Let's go on to slide six. And, and Romans 5, 11 says, and not only so, but we also enjoy, also joy in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now have received atonement. Christ paid for your sins. He took the penalty for your sins. How many of you are familiar with the term whipping boy? Have you heard that? He's just a whipping boy. <clears throat> my generation and my parents' generation used that term a lot. Oh, he's just a whipping boy. And I never really quite understood it until I, until I did some reading. Well, I had to take a history class, so I looked at history. And in England, the royal child, the prince, the princess, were not allowed to be punished. They weren't allowed to be spanked. If a, if a little prince misbehaved or a princess misbehaved, they didn't beat them with a stick. They didn't whip them with a cane. They brought in a peasant boy or peasant girl, and they whipped them instead. 
That's stupid, isn't it? Doesn't make any sense at all. I wish my brother could have been my witness. <laughs> I don't even know my brother. He teaches middle school with the spring pit. Yeah, he didn't make a great one. One time he got caught playing with matches under the bakery. And uh, my dad challenged him and he said, you know, this was wrong. What would have happened if you would have burned the bakery down? He said, no doubt. So my dad, that was after my dad beat him with the belt. Then he beat him again. Beat him with the belt again. He gave him another lecture. And uh, he talked to him again. My dad, this, what, he just wasn't getting through to my brother. So my dad beat him again. And my brother started to whimper and started to cry and he went downstairs. He said to my mom, he said, I had to cry or he killed me. <laughs> my brother would have made a great whipping boy. But I want to tell you, Jesus Christ was our whipping boy. They beat Jesus and crucified Jesus rather than give you what you deserve. Amen? Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our sin so that we might be without blame. We have redemption through his shed blood, his beating, his crucifixion. Hebrews 2.9 says uh, that uh, he was, but we see Jesus who is made a little lower than the angels, not crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. He is the one who took our penalty. He is the one. Uh, Jesus said in John 3, 12, If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? You see, he was trying to talk to, talk to a, a, a very religious Pharisee that he had to believe before he can understand. The world does not understand. The world does not understand that someone else can pay for their sins. The world does not understand, much of the world, that there is a loving Father. They don't understand that. But those of us who are called by the Spirit and respond to the Spirit have our spiritual eyes open, and then we understand. That I don't know about you, but that, that gets me excited. That makes me happy to know that that can happen. Cheryl asked me if I knew what I was going to preach on, and I said, yeah, I've been thinking through it. I've been thinking through it ever since I determined what I'd be speaking on, just what that means to be in Christ, to have every spiritual blessing, because to be in Christ means I get it. I understand. I get it. Before that, I could never, I could never understand what that was. When I was in Russia, we talked to a grandmother who said, we, I gave her the gospel. She said, I can't possibly do more good than the bad I've done in my life, so I'll never make it. She missed the whole point. Her eyes were closed. She was not in Christ. She didn't get it. We gave her the gospel, and she didn't see it. She didn't understand it. She had been taught wrong, and she rejected Christ. She reject, rejected the grace because she didn't understand it. When we are in Christ, we understand. When we are in Christ, we rejoice. When we are in Christ, we get blessings. When we are in Christ, we have happiness. When we are in Christ, we want to please Him. When we are in Christ, we, we, work, we work to please Him, even knowing full well we can't. And when God sees us, He sees us through Christ, who is seated at the right hand of the Father and saying, there's Brian Detweiler down there. You know what he did this week. God, you know he's a bonehead. But I died for that sinner. I died for him. And the Lord looks at Brian just as if he had never seen him. He looks at me. I don't think you're a bonehead. I just, I just wanted to get a laugh at your expense. But nobody laughed. That's kind of scary, isn't it? I've, I've been criticized by my senior pastor in the past that I should never mention anybody's name because it'll always get you in trouble. So please forgive me now and say yes in front of everybody. <laughs> when we stand before the Lord, He defends us. He is our advocate. He is the one who says, I died for that sin. I know that they're not right, but they are because of what I've done. Hebrews 1, 1 through 3 said he talks about how he had sat 
he had by himself purged our sins, ascended back to the Father, sat down at the right hand of the majesty, and he's there today to make intercession for us. 1 Timothy 2.5, where it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man, Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2.5. Jesus, the man, is not a mystic. He's not spirit. He's the man. He's in heaven now, seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding and meditating for all saints. If we are born again, then our spiritual life is in Him. Going back to that first verse, in Him. Christ. What's it mean to be in Christ? If you are in Christ, you realize that this is a temporary place for you. And, you, and when, when people sing, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. And you get it. You get it. You see, if, if, you're, if you're like some of the, the, the people I've taught with who believe that they are here because of some kind of evolution, they are here because after the Big Bang, not the TV show, but after the Big Bang, uh, the world slowly evolved and we came through this long chain of evolution to what we are today, and they understand that. Uh, Stephen Hawking, probably the, the smartest mind in, of our generation, said that there is no room for God in evolution. There is no room uh, for God for anybody who has any kind of thought at all, he doesn't get it because Stephen Hawking is not in Christ. When we are in Christ, we get it. When we are in Christ, we see that this, this is not it. Can you imagine if this were it? This is all you get? You may have some financial success in life. Life may be pretty good. You may have a life where you struggle all the time. But whether you have a successful life or you struggle all the time, if you think you're only going to get maybe 80 years, that's it. It's over. You're annihilated. When you go to sleep for the last time, you never wake up and that's it. You don't even know you're dead. You just cease to exist. That's it. That's no blessing to me. Maybe you're living a life where you have a lot of pain every day. Maybe you have a life where uh, you have some, some chemical imbalance where some days are great and some days are horrible and it doesn't matter when, that, when those chemicals are out of balance, it's horrible. No one can make it better. No one can make you feel better. If that's it, we are to be most pit pity, aren't we? That's it. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. I get it because I'm in Christ. I get that, that this is a temporary place. Our citizenship is in heaven. Believers are identified in Christ. Identified in Christ. We are identified in 2 Peter 1, 4 says, in nature. We're identified with him in nature. We become more Christ-like. Now you say, but you don't see me all the time. You don't see when I lose my cool. You don't see me all the time. I promise you, if you are in Christ, you're way better than you would be if you were. What's that old church say? I'm not what I should be, but thank God I'm not what I was. Right? In Christ, we have a new nature. It's not perfect yet. We have a new life in Christ. A new life. We have a new relationship. There is somebody who loves you. Some people grow up not realizing that there's anybody who loves them. We have a relationship with Christ, in Christ. We, we, we re are related to him in his suffering. He suffered for us. We have an inheritance. When, when, when my wife and I pass on, my son will get every part of our debt. <laughs> he gets it all. He'd like us to live a long time, hopefully, so we can get out of that. When we are in Christ, we inherit his future glory. We will be in heaven with him. And we, we will just be in the presence of God. Born again believers are heavenly citizens. 
Now, it comes to the point where, well, I wonder if I'm born again. Oh, I wonder. I said words. I remember saying words at camp one time. We used to turn in seminary called easy believism, where people say words and they don't really mean it. It's kind of a temporary thing. You don't see a change in their life. But if you're a Christian, you're going to be known by your character by the way you behave most of the time. We're, none of us are perfect. You can assess yourself. You can see where it is. According to Oliver Green, he says this, if you'd rather be hanging out in a bar, you need to maybe reassess your citizenship. If you'd rather look at pornography on the internet than be in the Word, perhaps you better reassess your citizenship. If you'd rather hang out in Caesar's Palace or go down to Atlantic City to enjoy the casinos rather than the ocean, perhaps you should assess your citizenship. If you don't think or think twice about verbally or physically abusing your wife and your children, perhaps you should observe or reassess your citizenship. If you really hate your brother and determine not to pray for him, perhaps you better reevaluate your citizenship. If you wish that Jesus would wait to come back for his church because you'd rather be here than in heaven, perhaps you better reassess. If you wish you'd rather be in someone else than have to go to stinking church on Sunday morning, perhaps you better reevaluate your citizenship. What is it for you? What is it that is your home? What is it to mean that you are in Christ? If you are in Christ, you have many spiritual blessings. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He was not asking for us to be taken out of here. He was asking for us to be sustained while we were here. Somebody said one time, wouldn't it be better off to go to Africa and win people to Christ and then kill them so they don't have to realize what, what kind of horrible world this is? Wouldn't it be better for us to get saved and have the Lord take us right out? Wouldn't that be better? Well, we're not saved just to go to heaven. We're saved to be in Christ so that we're of value here on earth. Right? What a valuable tool you are if you are in Christ, living in Christ, acting as you should, loving other people, being Christ on earth. Christians mean to be Christ-like. You're better off to do that and be God's tool. I'm so thankful for this church. So thankful for the people who are willing to work. So thankful for the person who put this puzzle up to get me to think because there's got to be something spiritual about that because I know you people and I know there's going to be something good for out of that. I'm thankful that many of you who are in Christ are living like that. I'm thankful that many of you who are in Christ are loving, who are serving, not because you want to, or not because you have to, but because you want to. Not because you're, you're serving, not because you want to chalk up points to try to get to heaven, but because you love the Lord so much that you want to please Him. I'm nice to my wife. I told her, I said, I have to be nice to you because half of all my debt is yours. And you can help me pay it off. That's what I told her. I'm really nice to my wife because I love her. I like to be around her. I'm, I'm whole when she's there. We have a relationship that is not perfect like our relationship with Christ, but it's a relationship based on years and years of trust. There's someone who loves you so much they would die for you. <clears throat> when my, when my uh, oldest boy was diagnosed with cancer, there was no question in either one of our minds that we would instantly, without a thought, give our lives for that child. If I could trade my life to keep him alive, I would have done that in a minute. That's what Jesus did for you. If you have that relationship and you are in Christ, then you understand what it means to love. If you are in Christ, then you're able to live a successful Christian life. You see, divers go down underwater, but they don't go down on their own. Except for a few people, you can only hold your breath for maybe two minutes. 
if they're going to stay in that environment for any period of time, they're going to take oxygen with them. If you're going to live in this Christian life and be successful for any period of time, you must have the Spirit of God with you. And when you are in Christ, you are in His Spirit. You are in His care, and you can be successful. You can do that. The songwriter wrote the words, Moment by moment, I'm kept in His love. Moment by moment, there's light from above. Moment by moment, if we're going to be successful living for Christ and loving Him and giving back to Him, it's because we have His Spirit with us. It's because we're surrendering to Him. Oliver Green said, If Jesus withdrew His power to sustain this world, to sustain your life for one minute, if He withdrew that, we would fail. Think about your life this week. Think about the times when you had choices to serve Him or not serve Him. This is not a confession time. I don't want to know and I'm not going to tell you mine. The times when you messed up. Sins of omission where you should have done something, done something but you didn't do it. Or you did something you shouldn't have done. I've had those moments. It's better than it used to be but I've had those moments. Now, take away the relationship I have in Christ, the way He's changed my nature in Christ, the way He's given me love for Him in Christ, and it'd be a disaster. But in Christ, we can have all of those things. His concern reaches our utmost need. God, God's love ensures us that He will freely give us all things, Romans 8.32. Freely give us all things. God promises thus that every one of our needs will be supplied if we surrender to Him. If we're truly in Christ, we have all of these spiritual blessings. It's been said that if we stand before God and we hear Him say, Well done my good and faithful servant. It's only because we've been in Christ. Because you take away what? The spiritual blessing, the changing character, the love for Him that we have in Christ. You take those away and think about your life and the way you live your life, you realize you're not going to measure up. That God will not say, well done, my good and faithful servant, because except for Christ and what He's done, except for the way Christ has changed you, except for the way Christ has loved you except for the way Christ has given you strength to serve Him, you wouldn't make it. You wouldn't be able to hear those words. There is no pastor, minister, evangelist, teacher, preacher, priest, pope you can, who confess you before God the Father. There is only one, one mediator, the Christ Jesus, who, who will confess you to the Heavenly Father. Jesus said in John 14, 6, No man comes to the Father but by me. We must be in Christ. When we are, He opens a whole storehouse of spiritual blessing. If I give you a, a box with an expensive gift in it, and you never open the box, my efforts have been wasted, and you lose your blessing. The Lord has given us that spiritual gift of surrendering to Christ. Perhaps you hear, you're here and a lot of what I said doesn't make sense. You don't understand because you don't have that relationship with God. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful enough to, faithful to give us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins. If you do that, you can be in Christ. If you're here this morning and you've never done that, I've got all the time you need to show you in the scripture how you might know today that you are in Christ. And for those of you who, like me, have realized that I was chosen before the foundation of the world and I, I've, I've chosen to believe that and apply that gift and confess my sins, we can leave here full of joy. 
saying, Lord, thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your spiritual blessings. Thank you, you supply every need. And Lord, I love you. I'm going to determine to serve you. Show me how and give me the strength to obey. Amen? Amen. It's exciting to be a Christian. <coughs> it's even exciting to be a Christian in this Landrysville Grace Brother Church. There's going to be lots of opportunity for you to serve as we, uh, as we serve two churches, one church, two bodies, in different ways, many ways you can serve. Keep your channel tuned to this station. Keep tuned. Pastor Mark will give you and show you opportunities how you may serve Christ and demonstrate your love. Love is a verb. DC Talk, 1980. Love is a verb. If you love God and you love your wife, it motivates you to do things, right? If you love your husband, you're motivated to do things. If you love God, you'll be motivated to do the things that come before you in the next couple months as we determine we're going to share God's love in different places. Amen? Amen. Praise team. Come on. Lord, thank you for your love for us. And if there is one person here who has never trusted Christ as a personal Savior, Lord, I pray you'll direct them to me so that I might be able to show them in the scripture where they can find Christ. Bless us, Lord, as the praise team sings and we sing about your love and your grace. Let's stand together now to be saying your grace is enough.
have together, Lord, I pray that your name is glorified and, and realizing that when we are in Christ, we have everything. Thank you for uh, the praise team. Thank you for your grace. That's the name this church has chosen, grace. Bless us as we leave this place to go into your mission field so that we might live like we are in Christ this week. Pray in Jesus' name.